Hello, how are you doing today? This is Ellen Mongan and, and this is Pat, Deacon Pat Mongan, MD. And I was today, we're having a show called Deacon and Deer. It's gonna be a mystery show. <laughs> it's gonna be like a safari hunt. We're gonna talk about ways to improve your marriage through reading together and learning about different things like faith, hope, and love through books. I just did a, I just did a podcast with Wow Mom about books with Lisa Caprelli. And you should check out her website as well. She she does a lot. If you listen to the name, she has unicornjazz.com. It's a very, very good show on books for children. But this is for adults, right? We're having adult time, right, honey? Amen. So, so I'm, De I'm Deer, and you're the deacon. So deacon, take it away. Last time I checked. <laughs> yes, he's a new, not new deacon, but he's newly assigned, thank you, Lord, to our home church. And we cannot be more delighted. We're still on the safari, though. Amen. So what do you do on safari, deacon? Well, it depends where you're going. You're looking for something, usually on the safari. Either you can go on a wild animal safari and just look to see, whoa, wild animals. <laughs> or or go to find something like a temple or some kind of thing out in the d jungle or even out in the desert. So safaris can go after lots of different things. Yeah, we've never done safari, apparently, so I really didn't know. I didn't have the right clothes. Oh, no, safari. we wanted to. <laughs> we go, it. but they had animals. <laughs> I done safari. I, we were supposed to go on safari with Father Fortunato one year, and he was at the Church of the Most Holy Trinity, remember? Yeah. And, and I asked, do you have animals? On the, do you have, and that wasn't even safari. We were supposed to go on a mission trip with safari. Gluten. Tanzania. And do we have, do you have animals? And he goes... No, no, yeah. but priests are allowed to lie, so possibly he's blind. <laughs> he hasn't seen him. And then I say, Father, look at me. Do I have the right clothes for safari? You do fine. <laughs> well, we never did go on safari because I went my way. The odds, it wasn't me at all. I don't do well, animals. He, he couldn't leave the country at the time. That's true. And I don't do outdoor potting that well or outdoor tent with a. I don't let's do camping. See, I'm not camping more. Let's tell <laughs> them the truth. <laughs> Camping out for Ellen is Motel 6. That's right. And, and camping to me is, would be really, really hard if you're not like the outdoors. But we had a lot of adventures in our marriage. So one way we're trying to improve, like, you know how they, we had the pandemic? And that's really where we started with really heavy reading because clearly we had time. <laughs> and so we started reading books together, which was a marvelous adventure, like a safari. And that we, we had um, so many things that we wanted to, to learn about. So we're going to talk about three books today, and then we're going to do a bonus book. Because one book we, we had, gave to a friend, is, we're not going to show, but this is the first one. We're talking about Faith, Hope, and Love. This is a book. Do you want to read the title? Deacon? Swept Up by the Spirit. Written by our friend Gary Garner. He's amazing. Just had a birthday. Happy birthday, Gary. Oh, I almost lost his book. But this book taught us a lot about faith, the gift of faith. They say faith is a gift, right? And the power of the Spirit in yes. somebody's life. Yes, go ahead. Take it away, Deacon. I'm going to hold it well, up again. Yeah. You see that book? you got to have one. It's a new one's coming out. Another. He's going to do another new book. And this one you have to have first. It, it, it builds the faith. Okay. How do you build faith, Deacon? Saying, well, it's I, a I gift. Know. It's a gift from the, the God. And especially if you've been baptized, obviously, it's a gift. And... Uh, it, but it's a gift that uh, can grow That's right. or not, and, you know, depending on uh, how you respond. The, the more you respond to the faith, the more faith you get. And so that's a big part of what Gary's book is about, is how he went from being a pagan, a non-believer, <laughs> to becoming a faith-filled um, Christian who was trying to do whatever the Spirit called him to do. Yeah. And... Uh, some pretty miraculous things. And one one of the things that I would tell you, you will read the book and think, oh, he's just making this up <laughs> or it's science fiction or whatever. But we've known Gary a long time and Gary is probably one of the most honest uh, people you will ever meet. And if he says it's in the book, it happened. It's amazing to read. You know, they say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. But when someone tells a testimony of faith, that's when your heart, your eyes of wonder come out and you are like amazed. This really happened. You know, Father McDonald used to say, you don't, you don't um, teach someone faith. You catch, catch it. it. And you catch it because people tell their story. And it's really, it is body language as well. But then you go, I want that to happen to me, Lord. And since God's not a respecter of persons, he has similar things happen to you. You have to have eyes open wide to hear what he's saying. You could, uh, someone could tell a faith story and you could sit there in your fleshly man and go like, man. This guy's making it up, like Pat said. Right. 
If you have eyes of wonder to say, oh, Lord, teach me all about you. I remember one girl on a, on a tape from Lighthouse Ministry, she said, prove it to me, Lord. And I was like, whoa, who says prove it to me, Lord, to Jesus? But she did. Did God slaughter her? No. No. He was, just like he was Downing, for that moment. <laughs> just like Downing Thomas. And he did, right? Downing Thomas. Yeah, I was like, that's another one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in, uh, if, if you, as you read the Gospels, if you think in terms of the apostles and you know, who were there with Jesus day in and day out, and it took them forever <laughs> to get it, to That's really right. understand. And, and they really didn't understand, even though they were walking with him every day. So, as Ellen likes to say, it's a journey. And it took time. It took a lot of experiences. Uh, with Jesus and spending time with Jesus and they had an idea but it wasn't until they got the spirit okay. uh, after the resurrection of Jesus and he poured the spirit upon them that they really understood what Jesus had been teaching them it's true. and that's why we all need to say come Holy Spirit we say every day we need, love. We need love the spirit we, we pray we for the spirit really every day yes but you know what? You know what? Downey Thomas was not admonished, and God even said nope. to him, nope. "No, here, put your fingers in my hand." He wanted him to experience, so he couldn't forget. And that's how Gary's book is. I want you to tell one of the stories. The book, I don't care which one, because it's like you feel like you're right there. The way Gary writes, and I'm sure Nancy had a part in in editing, like my husband edits for me. And it just makes your faith come alive. Tell one of the stories, because I know you like. There's so many favorites we have. We would like which one should we tell? Which one do you want to tell? Wow. That's not a wild story. <laughs> well, I, one of the stories that seems pretty simple, really, is uh, Gary uh, was going down, uh, I think, with Nancy. Yeah, with Nancy. Going down back roads in Georgia or South Carolina and it's somewhere out in the rural areas, and he's driving along, and there was um, uh, some uh, ladies in front of him, and he passed them, um, and they... Um, they broke down eventually after they were following back and forth for a while and he decided to stop and he and Nancy both got out because it was um, African American women all by themselves um, on the, in their Sunday best, the Sunday best. and uh, they approached them and uh, they were a little nervous and uh, Gary said, uh, it looks like you're having car trouble. And Gary says, I know nothing about cars. <laughs> and he said, and, and he said to them, is it okay if I pray over your car? And they said, sure. So he prayed over their car and it started right up and off they went. It was amazing. It's yeah. amazing. You think it was amazing. I think it's, you know, God is so faithful. If we just open our hearts and say, whatever you ask me to do, Lord, I'm going to do it. And he's faithful and just to do what he said he was going to do. And sometimes the answer is no. We always say that because maybe you prayed up a car and it just, you had to call the, we had a bad experience, remember, honey? Yeah. We, um, our car broke down and we were outside of, um, out now of Garden Carabas. We had done couples night out. Wasn't that it? And, um, Pat and I prayed up the car and the tow truck had to come. We had prayed up the car the week before at Walmart. <laughs> Nothing was really wrong with the car. That's the funny part. I had my friend June and I, we laid hands on the car, prayed on the car, and it went to the shop, and they towed it away. And what was wrong with it, honey? Battery. That's the second one. Even? That was at Carabas. What about the other one? The first one at Walmart, when June and I prayed, it was nothing. Nuisance. Nothing was wrong. They couldn't find I mean, anything wrong Pat was, eventually. You know, these, these things amaze Pat and I. We get, we're amazed by the wonders of God. You know, sometimes God's teach us a lesson. Maybe patience, maybe like you should have got a tune-up. But our car was in pretty good shape. But two times it, was, it did that, and two times there was nothing really wrong. Our batteries, like, maybe a light was left on a crawl. Was maybe that was me. Okay, so, sorry, honey. So what yeah, do you well, think? Well, what do you think about faith? We've got to talk a little more about faith. Do well, I, I, think, I think, you know, one of the important do, 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 things do, do, to remember is that God is still about doing miracles. We send, that's what I want some to people, touch on, honey. Some people believe that, oh, because, you know, that he only did miracles back uh, in the time of the apostles. Mm -hmm. And, and the part of the reason Jesus did more miracles back then was because people didn't have a New Testament Bible. Mm -hmm. They didn't have all this uh, experience and, that was written down about Jesus and what he did. And so we have that. 
So mm -hmm. we don't have really an excuse and a need, shouldn't always need a, uh, you know, some miracle or prove it to me mm -hmm. when Jesus has proven it because he died for us on the cross and was r risen from the dead, you know, and so that should be proof enough and his word is there uh, and his testimony is there for us to see. Mm -hmm. But so. at the same time, he didn't say, oh, I'm not going to do any more miracles. And we know that he does do miracles. He does. And when it happens to you, when it's a miracle that happens to you, wow, you always remember it. You do. And you don't, you don't, you don't take it lightly. And you, you pray fervently for others when they need a miracle. But I had a miracle today, Pat. Do you want to hear what it was? Sure. Okay. Tell me. Okay, I woke up today, and I, was, I had hair that was gray on the crown. And then I went, I went by now. It's, it's, I just got back from Christy. No, Dee Dee. I'm sorry, Dee Dee. Dee Dee, thank you. And then I, I'm a blonde. So I said, it's a miracle. Look, I, do, I look better than I did before. You know, old age is a sign of wisdom. Yeah, that's so right, old, right. But truly, a uh, miracle, they say they didn't do miracles in the land because there was little faith. Some places didn't get a miracle. But it seems like sometimes you say to the Lord, why did you do that miracle for them? Because it seems like they didn't, they weren't grateful. Or they, yeah, yes, but, but if you go and look at all those, most of those stories, okay. um, and examples in the Bible, when uh, Jesus does miracles, he almost always says, it's not the miracle that's important. That's right. It's their faith that's important. The fact that they came to Jesus with expectant faith, hoping that he would heal them or cure them or heal somebody in their family. It was their faith. And he always says, your faith has saved you. Do you think that people only go to Jesus when they have um, they, their, I mean, disaster strikes? Look at Hannah in the Bible. She's like, oh my word, I need a miracle now. She'd wait a long time. Some of these people in the Bible that were the Old Testament, they had waited a long time for me to overcome. They waited for the Messiah to come. Hannah, Hannah was waiting for a baby to come. I mean, she got baby, the baby that she desired, Abraham was waiting, Moses even was waiting. So waiting is a part of the miracle. Do you think it's, a, right. I think the gift of miracles means that you pray though, and, and that's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and it happens instantly, you go, oh, it's a miracle. Then the, the gift of healing, that's like you pray and you, you wait and you go to the doctors, like lots, you're still healed. And some miracles are inside your heart, right. like something has happened in your heart. My sister Lynn is, um, is actually right now in a wheelchair, and I keep saying to her, you know, she, I'm honey, we're hunting for what God wants her to do. You know, we, we God allows certain suffering, and we learn. I mean, I, I have learned so many things through suffering. I cannot tell you, and God has used me mightily through suffering. We lost baby Zachary September 13th, 26 years ago. But the miracles that have happened since then in our heart, when someone loses a baby, we're there. When someone, when someone is suffering, we know how it feels, you know. It's just very important to know that there's more to it than just like presto, change oh. Right. Cause God just and as you like to say, the greatest miracles are what happens inside of people. And as Jesus said, I will replace your stony hearts That's right. with fleshly human hearts. That's very good. I like that scripture a lot. You know, we had a miracle happen to us. We probably shared about last time, honey, but we had, sometimes a miracle is, you accompany someone through suffering. And our friend John Murphy passed away. You all hear us talk about a lot. He's an impressionable man. He's big as life. He was like a big as life guy. And the miracle happened is that we got to accompany him through suffering. And the changes we made during the time of accompanying him, he was kind of accompanying us as well. So you grow in different ways. And you, you almost can't, it's like the safari again. Do you think that's a lion or a giraffe? You don't know, really know what God's doing. And then afterwards, it makes sense. His ways are not our ways. Amen. So I was going to say one more thing about get faith, okay, unless you want to say something. Well, faith, is, faith is like a gift, and God gives it to you. Here, here's your gift of faith. Everyone gets the gift of faith at baptism, right? Mm -hmm. Baptism, it's a portion of faith. Mm -hmm. And you got to open the gift, right? Faith open. Lord. And you got to you know, open the gift, and it keeps, they give it to others, and you pass your sure. faith around. Yeah. And don't hold it to yourself. If you have the gift of faith, you need to be learn to be an intercessor and pray for those who are just going, well, if you're real, Lord. If you know he's real, and be able to speak out prayer. in faith. Yeah. That's right. There's lots going on in this world. We need a heap of faith. <laughs> My prayer brother used to say, we need a bucket full of grace. We need a bucket full of faith, too. And if you have faith, use it for his glory and believe that he's going to, he hears you. He's not sleeping. I'm up there all night praying a lot. I always remember to say to myself, God neither, neither slumbers or sleeps. He's up with me. He's never asleep. Amen. So pray morning, noon, and night. And pass your faith around. So the next book we're reading is Life is Messy. 
by Matthew Kelly. It's new out. And do a report on it. You know, one of the things about reading these books together mm -hmm. um, is it gives different perspectives. Surely. That Ellen sees things and hears things different than I do, and so That's it, the opposite it's couple. actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it helps you get more out of it, uh, and we discuss it as we go along. So, now, this book is not particularly one in terms of a Christian book. It is, because there's a lot of good truths in it, but he doesn't point to Jesus a, a lot in the book. Oops. Um, it, periodically, he does. Um, he does, but you have to know. But there's a lot of truths in terms of, um, as he says, life is messy. What do you think and the picture describes? The, one <laughs> I mean, of the things. The pictures of. I just try to yeah. sit there and look at the picture and go, what was that? <laughs> it's cute, right? right? It grabs your attention, but it's, you it's know. It's like somebody doodling and just writing all over. Know, messy. Tell, tell the book. So, yeah, so he talks a lot about and, you know, shares a lot of things that happened to him, you know, when he's a. Um, published a lot of books and and so I think it's a it's a way for him to um, generate some money because he is well, so popular he does, he gives away and, and uh, support his dynamic Catholic ministry in the church um, but uh, but I think it also is a way to try to reach people who wouldn't pick up a quote Christian or Catholic book Helps it under his name. It says New York Times best-selling author. Exactly. <laughs> he's famous for saying, you know, dynamic Catholic. And what well, we were curious to um, understand. He's the best version of yourself. He that, he's he's yeah, that's what he's going to say that. But what we were curious to, um, we talk about different people we know. At John Murphy's funeral, his granddaughter that was there singing and also sharing a video actually works for Matthew Kelly. Do you remember what her name was? remember and that's embarrassing so you could write me a letter and I'll say thank you good to meet you but it was neat to have a connection that John kind of had a, a granddaughter that was walking in faith and living for Christ but this book gives you hope sometimes in life you think well I'm the only one that happens to I never think that because I saw things happen to me I'm like surely I'm not the only one but yeah because as you read his, his the okay. stories and things that he shares I up it's crooked when he yeah, goes on the back of the mirror when you read through it, knowing that he's been successful, um, I think it helps to put it in a perspective. You know, he's been able to turn adversity around. That's and I like to say, you know, living a Christian life isn't that complicated in terms of the principles that God has given us, the Ten Commandments okay. and other things and the, the teachings of the church. But people and life are complicated. That's right. That's right. You could be doing a perfect life, and then in comes your child, your husband, or your friend, and you're like, "Wow, my life's going so well." You learn. Today. You learn that well, real quick. That was a really. Yeah. I was having a really good day. I woke up joy filled and full of life, and then all of a sudden, someone got messy. <laughs> That's what I was thinking on the cover, honey. I was thinking, you know, we were going to talk with the grandchildren today about darkness was on the land, and then there was light. It kind of looks like that, but I'm sure that's not it because this is the messy right. part. But yeah. like, there is darkness. Mm -hmm in everyone's life and there's times of, of um you know up and down up and down what do they call it it's, it's called um well we know dark night of the seasons soul. we have seasons but we have there's times of elevation and the lord lead it and then mountains there's times and yes. valleys yes yeah, there's some times that like that and if you're having a time like that get around someone that is walking that day in more of the upland because that helps you to, to be be a little bit okay because when they say to you, no, I'm not really always joyful myself. I need a little help from my friends. I liked what, what Matthew Kelly said about needy, because you know you and I discuss it a lot. You know, needy, he shared about how needy people need God too, right? And it was okay to be needy. Being needy, needy is, that, is good. It was good. And he said that he talked, another thing I really liked, honey, I don't know if you liked it, when he talked about uh, inhuman, that we could dehumanize people. My friend um, uh, that I interviewed on another show, she talked about the marginalized. Do you remember that look? I had it. Right. We have to, Pope John, well, Pope, Pope it, Francis has begun looking yeah, out for the What we see starting. is going on in our culture is a dehumanizing of people. And I, part of it is, I think, is because social media and, and the phones and everything, because rather than seeing people face to face, we can spit out all these words and negative words and say ugly things and we don't see what it does to people. But 
we see, you know, young people killing themselves, you know, kidding, committing suicide and taking drugs and overdosing because they're suffering from emotional pain. That's and right. uh, one, of the, one of the things as we're talking that I was thinking about, because okay. one of the stories we read today okay. in Life is Messy, told it really straight. <laughs> um, that uh, Matthew Kelly was started thinking about a friend that he hadn't oh, contacted for a long time. Good story. And um, he went and visited the friend right at that moment. And when he showed up, his friend looked horrible. And he walked in and the house was a mess and everything. He wasn't dressed. And he, I mean, he was dressed, went and spent some time with house. him, encouraged him to shave, take a shower, clean up, and he cleaned up around the, the house. And uh, they sat down and they had pizza together and talked and shared. Um, and then he went home and, and uh, this man wrote to him and said that he had been thinking about killing himself mm. until Matthew Kelly showed up showing him that somebody cared. That's right. And, That's so right. That, and then um, Gary Garner in his book yeah. also shares stories of, of uh, being, led to. being led by the Spirit. And, and we think that's obviously what happened with Matthew Kelly, mm -hmm. and being led by the Spirit to go visit somebody and talk to them and uh, encourage them and the same sort of thing, that somebody was ready to blow their brains out with a gun mm -hmm. um, if he hadn't showed up. Um, so... Uh, yeah, if, exactly. if you have that kind of prompting to call somebody or do something for somebody, it could be uh, the Spirit of God encouraging you to save somebody's life. Well, I have a question. What do you think about my ministry, about where I put things in a drawer? At the end of the week, I get all my cards and letters and start writing on Monday to all people that I think. <laughs> I, no, I really do think it's an important thing. If you're a woman or man that has a heart, a big heart of compassion, and wants a ministry that... It's kind of a remote ministry. They don't pay much. She's God picking on me grace. because <laughs> she's picking on me because I I'm, said letters. <laughs> that's that's not the kind of thing I typically do. No, my wife is the one the who really, really is very good at that. No, you encouraging the people and making people feel special. And we want to be special. And I'm just the work of bee. You're not a work of bee. You're a deacon. But the thing is, I think it's a great ministry for people that are are in home a lot and have. Cars don't cost that much. Now, Pat will remind you that stamps are how much. I mean, they're a lot about your stamps. But you know what? What if, what if that one letter sails over to Nebraska, New York, or we sent a letter to Nebraska. Our father, our fellow priest friend, a fellow priest friend of his um, father, Katowski. Katowski was ill, and we wanted to cheer him up. And, and then, who knows? You know, I've had things happen to me like this. I give a lot of things away, and I give... I do a lot of things like that, and I had one time, maybe in the last 10 years, a letter come to me and said, I, I was in the Louisville, Georgia library, where I, I was in the 70s, my mom and dad moved to Louisville, and I found your book in the library, and it, in those days I wrote pamphlets, they weren't hardback like this, and she said, I want to thank you, it helped me. You don't know, if you, like I've been in the airport and handed out books, and people write me and said, I brought this book in the mission field with me, or whatever it is, you have to be a giver to know that Giving has its own reward. Maybe it costs you some money. Maybe it costs you some time. Or uh, maybe you know, how much for the stamps. But in the end, you know, God wants his people to reach out in love. You're the hands of Christ. So that this is what Matthew Kelly does, I know, on an ongoing basis. At Christmas and Easter and different holidays, he gives away a lot of books to churches. Sometimes he'll, he'll say things to the priest, like, if you want 100 books, I can throw this low price. And I admire him because he helps me. He's got a positive attitude. And Gary helps me a lot too. We're, we're, we're friends. We're, we say trends separately at birth. So, how about the next book? Is Mother Trees we don't have? Well, it. yeah. So this one just said, okay, this one said. Well, we'll we're, spend more time on we'll, this uh, one. We're also reading, or have we this finished? The, you said all in one. Uh, Mother Trees' uh, okay. Spiritual Fire. And that was on love. But this one here, Pat, I said, what's this book on? He said, Faith, Hope, and Love. <laughs> That's a deep book. A Church in Crisis it's by like, Ralph it's, Martin. Again, <laughs> This is, this is one of those things where knowing the author, knowing about him and his renewal ministry, um, sure. can you can read this and really as you read this, it's pretty depressing about the state of the church, 
about the state of our culture and society. Um, but we know Ralph is a person of faith, and he's. Uh, we haven't gotten to that part of the book where he talks about ways forward, or it says pathways forward. He's right now. We're reading about laying out all the problems um, in our society and church, and the attack on Christians, and sure. and and really the uh, spiritual attack upon uh, the church within our culture and, and the world, in mm -hmm. fact. And so uh, he um, he is a person of faith, and so he knows that in the end, God's going to work things out. You know, I think, honey, I think this, in life, it could be any problem. In a marriage, it could be in a family, it could be in the world, the church, it could be a, a problem with a friend. You have to face the thing before you begin to climb it, like climb the mountain. You have to face it, you know, okay. If you don't think there's a problem, then you, you can't even, like, solve it, or you got to face it. You gotta go, this is a problem. Say, I don't know, say you have to lose weight. Pat, Pat and I are on a spiritual diet to... Um, not do carbs and sugar. We didn't need to really lose weight as much as to eat right because we want to be healthy because right now it's very important. So it was a journey though, wasn't it? And to drink more water. I go to myself last night and I drank much water this week. It is, it's a choice. Life is a choice. Let's face it, to overcome sin, let Christ in and put virtue in. So we face the problems in the church before we can solve them. And, and you can't, there's so many problems in this world right now. You really, that doesn't take one man. It takes everybody. <laughs> one man can do it. And we know that. That's so why we pray for our president. We pray for all of our, all of our ex-presidents as well because you cannot solve the problem. It, but God, but God, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And God's put on the one person's right. heart what to do. He's going to put on your heart what to do or what to say. Well, and, and one way to tie life is messy with a, a church in crisis is uh, Matthew Kelly makes the point is if, if all you're about is being comfortable. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. And, and it ties very much into how people, and we see this during the pandemic, people, people are so fearful and they'd rather be comfortable, okay. be taken care of, and that's not who we are. We take care of each other, yes, but not the government taking care of us. Right. It's supposed to be people taking care of people and why the church um, opposes collectivism, Marxism, socialism, because uh, they take away really our dignity our, in terms of being able to freely choose to do good or not do mm -hmm. uh, good and, and to look out for the other because we choose to, not because we're forced to. That's good. Um, That's good. And so... Uh, in this uh, particular time with the pandemic, we all have a role to play in terms of are we allowing the government to turn us into children, <laughs> babies. Yeah. Mother, may I? Yeah. No, you may not. Two yeah. steps back. And go, okay, whoa. Versus Mother, being may I? I mature like adults okay. um, who, yes, we, we need to be concerned about our neighbor in terms of Maybe we need to take the vaccine, uh, you know, depending on who we are and our circumstances in order to look out for others. But at this point, uh, there's enough people who've had the vaccine and the people at high risk need, if they're concerned of, if, and fearful, then they maybe need to take the vaccine. Mm -hmm. But the idea that we all have to take the vaccine, this is not healthy. God is bigger than any problem. You have to take it to prayer. To each person, like we said, each person has to discern for themselves, wouldn't you say, deacon, doctor? And then you have to be happy with your decision. My thought is this, I went to hug a girl in church. I did, Pat, this is probably a funny story, maybe I shouldn't share it, but I'm gonna, that's who I am. <laughs> I hugged a girl in church, I did pretty well. She gave me a really funny look and just cringed up like she was super afraid. And I thought to myself, oh, do I ask permission before I hug someone I know? I don't know, if you're that fearful, stay home, because it's a sad thing to be. I've been afraid before, ask my husband, I'm afraid of dogs. When a dog is up me, I go, hello, I'm an adult, afraid of dogs. That will go, she's not, she's fine. I go, no, no, totally not fine. I pretend like I'm not scared. Do you like scared? I'm really scared. So I understand. But may stay home because people are going to be there and like be with their may coffee or may they're going to be, you never know. But you have to overcome your fears by first recognizing it. So I woke up as my fear. I'm afraid of dogs. <laughs> I don't afraid of dogs. I moved home and five of my kids live in my neighborhood. 
they always say to get a dog. Every dog comes to every family dinner, and there's the dog, right? Honey? So right. slowly but surely, your fear will go away. But if they're afraid of the virus, they need to eat right, duck, take some vitamins. Yeah, there's. Help them out. There are lots of resources you know. on the internet if you ask in terms of things you can take to help protect you uh, from the virus. Making sure you have plenty of vitamin D. Thank you. Plenty of vitamin C, uh, zinc. Um, so and some people take other things like elderberry. Um, so there are things that you want to have on board before you get exposed. Sure. And even even and. We're going to be, one of the things is a myth is this idea that we're going to cure the, the whole problem of COVID. Well, wait, Not wait. going to happen because as we've seen with the vaccine, the vaccine doesn't prevent the disease. It doesn't prevent the spread. Mm -hmm. It is keeping people uh, from dying in the hospital or going into the hospital at this point, but it's not keeping people from catching it just like we've always had coronaviruses we've always had the cold well, the common, there's never the been a cold no right. that. we that's right I so, hate a cold so we're going to have to live with this how do but how do we want to live that's good i think that too i taught my kids a prayer when they're little <laughs> that might lay me down to sleep i pray the lord my soul to keep if i die before i wake i pray the lord my soul to take if you know christ as your savior and lord and he's your father. He's going to lead you in the way of the way to go, and you're going to be fine. You, um, death is. We're all here to go to graduation day, which is go to glory. We, when when John Murphy died, everyone was the family honored him in such a way, like a whole a whole honoring. It is not the scariest thing in the world to die, but if you are afraid, perhaps you have a fear of death. I don't know. I'm not afraid to die because I've suffered so much greatly in my life, and God has always saw me through. You know, by grace you say through faith, not of yourself, but the gift of God. And he, he puts a peace in your heart. And he, I mean, even, even that you need to kind of recognize and go with. Uh, we're going to talk more about Ralph's. What's the favorite part about Ralph's book? I mean, to get off this subject, which is common for me. So what was about Ralph's book you want to share mostly? Because I want to share a little bit more about Mother Teresa's book before we close, because you kind of went by that one. Well, Pat, really likes, Pat really likes this book. That's, now, Pat loves this book. It's not that he likes it. He, he thinks I'm Ralph's oh, but, but Mother Teresa's he book. Loves it. Is this is because I like history and this right. kind of lays things out in a historical way in terms of uh, the Catholic Church and what it's going through and it's nothing new in terms of the church having gone through crises before. That's why the Council of Trent came about was because there was so much corruption and bad things going on in the church. Surely, and you know. I guess the part that's so eye-opening for me is that I'm such a naive little soldier of God. I was going to be a nun, and I got myself very sheltered. And then we were a Christian community, and I'm always like going, "Really? I, I guess I couldn't even. I don't even understand half the stuff. Is how, how, when, why? And I'm thankful that I don't. I'm really thankful that I don't understand. I'm not thankful that I don't understand the big words. <laughs> not the thing of that. I go back. What was this? I say, Roman writes in such a way. Do you remember Pope John Paul? And then there was. Um, Benedict, well, I can always understand Benedict better than John Paul. I love Pope John Paul because Benedict writes it a little more. Pope John now. Paul was a philosopher and Pope Benedict was a theologian. And so, uh, yes. See, I don't know why. So that was, bro, right, we shout out to you. Thank you for being Pat's mentor because everything he reads or hears about you, he loves. But going on to Mother Teresa, who is another one of my favorites, I can understand her book totally because I've lived a lot of it. If you don't know how much Jesus loves you, that's the book to read. Pat kept saying, this book really explains in a deeper way. It's a, it's a very meaty it's book. very like profound. Ralph's with profound. small words. <laughs> so. it, it's profound in that we have an example, a, a living saint. Mm -hmm. Well, she's not living now, but within our lifetime, alive so, in our yeah. lifetime, uh, setting an example that we can see and know about in a, in a way that you know, it's not like reading about somebody a thousand years ago, but reading of somebody in our lifetime who shows the a great example of God's love for us. Surely, surely. And then the problem with most of us, even Christians, is we don't fully understand or comprehend God's love for us. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm one of those. I'm still working on it. Um, but You're caught by that, right? You're caught by the fact that I thirst was her main she was on the train. Remember, Jesus is on the cross, and what does he say? 
He said, I thirst. And what he's really saying is, I thirst for all the souls uh, and who, who are even those who are persecuting him. Because mm -hmm. remember, he says, they know not what they are doing. Um, that's how much he loved us and loves us now. Um, and so he wants us to thirst for him like he thirsts for us. And what did, who wrote Mother Teresa's book about? I don't remember the title now. Father, Father Karowski well, fa is the no, one Father that told Langford me to read it. No, Father Langford wrote this book. Father Langford, oh, Father Karowski is the one that told me to read it like three years ago. It was my penance, so I'm finally doing that. I we like, I mean, finished it, so I'm good. But I, I really did, it wasn't really a penance. It was like a suggestion after confession. But don't you think that um, sadder yet, for people that know, they don't know any better. You said they don't know any better. Knowing better and doing the things, that's, that's when it's really a problem. Like you know something's wrong. Then, like right. it's different to eat a candy bar versus if you, like in this book, if you decide to ruin a life by doing something really, really naughty. So truly, um, I want to go back to Mother Teresa. She was on the train right. and God spoke to her, I thirst. He came upon her in a way that was uh, what what the church calls locution, where basically a person is just totally caught up in the spirit with Jesus um, and experiences this overpowering experience that it, it, it's hard to put into words. She tries to, I've had an inkling of it at times, um, and when it happens, you know. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, and the thing is, it changed her forever. It impressed us so much. We want to get for under, our, under in our fireplace. We have over our fireplace. We have a picture by Keith Johnson, a, a print. I'm not print. It's actually a, it's not actually a real. And it's big. It's a, it's a really nice painting. And we're gonna put underneath it. I thirst because we were so impressed by the fact of, she she was supposed to tell the world how much Jesus thirsts for for other souls, and then he thirsts after him. So we're gonna try to. Y'all lay me out there and make souls so that I thirst we want to know about it because we're gonna we're gonna put it there to remind us that, you know. Also the book reminded me that of this. Everyone has a calling on their life, right? Everyone has something that God's calling to do. And that was her calling within a calling. Her first calling was to be a nun. And then she went from there to be a oh, she was a nun teaching students. And then, yes, yes, and in then India she, and then this to, calling to minister to the poor. The poor is the poor. Again, the same marginalized, the same thing as the inhuman, like not being a, being a person of caring. So, I don't know. What do you also ask about Mother Teresa? I know we love her. We both love Mother Teresa. I love her because she quotes things that I say, well, who said that? Mother Teresa. She said, our quote downstairs, remember? Mm -hmm. If you want to live the gospel, go home and love. Love, start within your own family. We have it over our kitchen, so everybody's there that gathers, and we... We, we bring lots of people in hospitality in our home just to love one another. What else do you want to say? Well, the, the first book we, I read about her was okay. uh, Mother Teresa, Come Be My Light. I was brought that up, too, because I thought it was and, impressive. And that one, <laughs> that's a good one to read before you read, probably. Is it? This, because it's a little more of the historical in her own words. Okay. Um, but Father Langford, who um, is a priest um, who helped start uh, missionaries of charities, priests. Okay, I didn't um, know that. And so he it. You know, was, you know, intimately involved with uh, Mother. Um, whereas the "Come Be My Light" is her confessor, and the thing she was saying to her confessor, uh, in her own words, much of it is. And this is uh, oh. uh, Father Langford uh, journeying with Mother Teresa and. Um, being able to explain it in an extraordinary way, uh, M Mother Teresa's um, impact on the world. What did you like the best about that book? Though you really, you really grasp some new truths. I mean, there's nothing new under the sun. However, sometimes you you are you know something and you it's in your heart and you believe it, and then all of a sudden it just comes alive in your heart. And you want right. to just tell the world. You want to say, "Whoa." I just learned, and everybody goes, oh, I knew that. <laughs> and you're like, right. Your mom's broken, you go, okay, well, ah, I did not know that. It's like, bust yeah. well, but what do you want to say to you about Mother Teresa? I, I'm like, because we're going to say something to close it off soon, because we have, we have over-talked our share of words. Yeah. <laughs> That's not usually the wordy man, but when he talks about Jesus, he is. Um, well, I, you know, I mean, Mother um, is remarkable in the fact that when you read about her, Dark Night of the Soul, and yet all that time, 
God is giving her the grace to be able to smile at, and care for people sure. when inside she's hurting. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, so it, it's, she is a remarkable saint. And it's a remarkable what God was able to do with her. That's true. That's true. You know, um, we have this book by Matthew Kelly, not to be funny. And so he's having Alexander's terribly bad, no good year after year for three years. He's having like a dark night of the soul. He's having like a, and all that keeps going is like, what was he, what was the thing, what was, the, what was it about? And we don't know. See, we don't know what. Like, to oh, one guy, I have a hand meal. Well, he gave, he I'm gave. I'm like, Lord. Okay, to one, one, guy, one, one of the examples of his okay. uh, being messy is that within three years, he had three different kinds of cancer. Now, that's a bad day or a bad year, but you know what? That's the thing that makes you, <clears throat> makes you real. You know, I always tell about the Brown Rabbit, and I tell about Deacon Deer, probably, and how he, he's loved into wholeness. He, the little boy loves him so much, he became his whole. You know, God uses so many things in our life, sometimes the most tender part of our heart, is closed and we don't even know it because we covered it over with pride or fear or we're, not, we're afraid to be real. Not me, I'm always real. That's the problem. I, I know people, other people are doing that, but I, but he, you're afraid to be real. So we cover it with something. We say like, no, I got this one. Maybe we don't got it at all. <laughs> we're faking it until we make it. Well, you know what? That's when God allows some kind of suffering in our life and and we have it, and then we, we're, we're changed forever. Like, we, are, we haven't only suffered Zachary's death. Pat and I, we're in the ministry, let's face it. There, to those he loves, he loves much suffering, I don't know. And we've been through a lot of things. You know, we won't share them all. Maybe some days we do share different things, and we don't not share them. We don't not share them because we're afraid or we or hiding it. We don't share them because, you know, there, there, there are people listening. It depends on our audience. If there's baby Christians out there, we share. You know, my favorite sermon was by Father Cuddy, and he would always say, I love you and God loves you. I would weep every time because he knew that. He knew God loved him and he knew he loved every person in the world since then Father God has gone away. But what do you think, honey? Don't you think that as you able to share and become more real, God can use you more. If you, if you right. come up with your show, sure. like, here I am, sure. I got it all together, I'm so awesome. Then people are like, well, she just has the perfect life. She's yeah. good. We don't have that. No one it's has not, that. It's not about being a movie star. I so know that. <laughs> no, tell me, for real, honey, what do you want to close it with? Let's start, let's start here we go. So God gives us three virtues at the end, faith, hope, and love. Well, yes, there's many virtues, but the only ones that remain are faith, hope, and love. So you want to grow in faith. See, I do it this way because it looks like it is. This is the book for you. Grow in faith. Learn how God did, it, did some miracles for the world to hear about. And Gary was the mouthpiece God used to share them because they happened in his life. Why? Because Gary said yes. Amen. And he will do some in your life too. Say yes every day. The yes of surrender is not a one time thing. So that's faith. What do you think about faith? Right. Got and, faith? And if you got lots of faith <laughs> that's right. and care about <laughs> people, <laughs> love, then you'll be an evangelist, which that's Gary right. is. There is. And then we have, you know, life is messy. If you have, are you losing hope today? Are you feeling like, man, I have the worst life ever? I am Alexander with a terribly bad, no good day. Join the crowd. <laughs> so read Matthew Kelly's book, Life is Messy. And when you do, write him a letter and say, what's up with the cover, Matthew? We want to know what I'm going to have on the show. So see what he has. What do you have to say about that? That book has healed us in so many ways that we would first pass our reading like, I don't know. And then he started getting into it, right? Because it's simply written, but profound. Simple and profound is my favorite language. <laughs> then, we got, then we got Ralph. And Ralph is not only profound, but he's, He's very theologically sound, right? And there's and, the, and and in spite of all the troubles in the church, there is hope. And I'll still do what he does: renew ministry with with lots of people helping. And so the last one is Mother Teresa. If you need love, because that last one was faith, hope, and love rolled into one. We've only gotten to face the problem, <laughs> and to solve the problem it takes more than one man. It takes everyone doing their part. And the last one is Mother Teresa's book. Want to rename it for us? Written by Father Mother Teresa's spiritual fire. Yeah, it's not because I have all summers, because I'm very quick with it, except for Mother Teresa has so many books out, it's hard to keep them all straight. You know why? Because she said yes, and she became And a she saint. burned with love. And she burned with love for Jesus. And you can do the same. Look at Jesus up there calling you. There's a, there's a path right there for you to take. There's an ocean of love before you. What are you lacking? Faith, hope, love? Jesus. You asked, you blessed the audience. So we, as we close, you want to be the closing? Anything before you sing? Because I always sing. Not because I have a good voice. I just like <laughs> that, but we just have to have a theme. 
Right. Yes, what, what just, you say? I think it's your journey. Just uh, pray that everyone who hears us and hears only that which is from the Spirit mm -hmm. and is blessed by it and uh, grows in their faith and comes to know Jesus in a more intimate and loving way, as we say. This is Deacon and Deer closing off, and we're traveling along, along singing, singing a song, song side by, by side. Yeah. Look at Mom God says, bless you. Look at Mom says, don't quit your day job. <laughs>